Hi, this is Luke from NGN. Today we're going to talk about Other Side. Other Side is a tactical strategy game set in an alternate history in France in the 1800s. It's dark, it's gritty, and it boasts some roguelike elements as well. So, as usual, our MGN impressions are going to be broken down into four points. First, the story. How is the story? Is it interesting? Is it engaging? Does it make us want to stick around and see how the game pans out? Then the sound. How is the voice acting? Is there voice acting? How are the sound effects? How is the soundtrack? Do they feel good when they hit the ear? We'll find out. Then gameplay. How does the game feel to play? Are game mechanics fluid? Are they introduced well? We'll see. Then X Factor. The X Factor we're going to go with for other side is blending. Does it blend the strategy elements and the roguelike elements well? It boasts that it does, but if you want to find out, stick with me, you will. Like I mentioned in the intro, Other Side is a tactical role-playing game mixed with roguelike elements developed by the Lightbulb crew and brought to the world by its publisher, Focus Home Interactive. The game focuses on the player taking control of daughters to fight back the scourge of darkness and oppressing depression. The most immediately noticeable comparisons are XCOM for the strategy elements of the game and Hades for the roguelike. If players are familiar with either of those games, Other Side is going to come very naturally and you're already going to have sort of a feel for Other Side when you start playing. As always, the MGN impressions are going to be broken down into four parts. First being story, then sound, gameplay, and X Factor. The X Factor for our reviews will change from game to game and review to review. But with Other, S other Side, like I mentioned in the intro, we're going to stick with blending. Does the game blend its two genres well? Does the game benefit from having roguelike elements on top of the sort of traditional turn-based strategy gameplay? Want to find out? Stick with us, like I said, we'll get there. The first is story, and with story we're going to go with a 4 out of 10. Look, Other Side wants to tell an interesting story, it wants to be sort of this horrific fantasy noir tale that leaves an impression. The issue is that it doesn't. Beyond the initial dump of exposition at the beginning of the game, there really isn't a whole lot of depth once the game begins. You find yourself playing the mission simply because that's how you make progress in the game not because the story links them well. That is where the rod is most immediately noticeable, in that heavy lore dump at the start of the game. Some aspects have voice acting over text, and some the text sticks around, but there is no narration. There's no sort of explanation as to why some parts are voice acted and some aren't. It just feels awkward and a little jarring. <laughs> if the same cutscene that played at the beginning of the game were sort of thematic throughout the rest of your time in Other Side, and they were strewn between the levels and consistently voice acted and voice acted well, then I would have loved what the voice act what the voice actors and the writers were trying to achieve, but it's just not done at all. And yeah, so four out of ten for trying and uh, laying the foundation for a great story, but just missing the mark. And next is sound. We're gonna give sound and much improved on the story an eight out of ten. It's superb. The soundtrack for Other Side is composed by Max Leila, Pierre Le Pepe, and Solitaris, and each has done a brilliant job of bringing the game alive with music. It fits in with the thematic choices for the game, being set in that sort of drab, noir version of France in the 1800s, and as a result you feel really immersed in the game's setting from that sound. The soundtrack by itself is worth listening to in a single sitting, 1 to 14. Some tracks have even found their way into my regular listening, like for playlists of editing, writing reviews. It's pretty high praise. The game sounds fantastic during gameplay as well. One of the biggest eye draws for the game is that sort of gushing, brilliantly bright red blood that connects with enemies and daughters whenever they get hit by a skill. The sound effects for those moments hit the ear very well and it feels satisfying. It makes skills more satisfying. The sound effect of blood gushing, weapons firing, steel colliding with foes, look, I, it's great. I can't fault the sound design in selection or execution, so kudos to the game for that. My single gripe with the sound, and why I haven't given it a 10 out of 10 and only given it an 8, is how repetitive the voice lines are during gameplay. If your daughter takes 4 actions in a turn, there's a high chance that you're going to have to listen to the same voice line 4 times. If you've got three or four or five daughters in the game doing that repeatedly, it's annoying. It feels lazy, and it's pretty disappointing considering how much love has gone into the other aspects of the game's sound. 8 out of 10 for sound. Moving on to gameplay. Gameplay only gets a 3 out of 10. 
there's just not a whole lot there, to be honest. I kept waiting for the game to get deeper and deeper and it just never happened. Then I was waiting to unlock more classes for my daughters, I was waiting for skill trees to become more complex and diverse, make my daughters feel interesting or unique in any way, but you just keep waiting because it never happens. You're given the three initial classes for your daughters at the beginning of the game, and they're explained with a tutorial. That's about as deep as it gets without unlocking the Scythe Dancer. That's pretty disappointing, as the classes are done well, I was excited to get more of them and employ more strategy and combining the different variants, but it just doesn't happen. Alright, moving on from what we're given to work with to the maps, to the maps themselves. You, thrown, you throw a few daughters into a small street in France, then you move them near the enemies, if they're melee, you move them away from enemies if they're ranged, and that's about it. There's not a really a whole lot of depth or strategy there. There's no building entrances, hiding, positioning through, uh, any of that kind of thing. There's, there's no levels, there's no variance, there's just nothing, there's no height, there's small map, move to the bad guys, kill them, the end. Where, where's the strategy in my strategy game here? Well, maybe the gameplay's improved with the roguelike elements of the game boss, right? Nope. Remembrances give you buffs to your next run, but you don't feel punished Banning, failing to play well or plan well in a strategy game. That's a bad idea, that's a horrid idea. If you don't feel punished for not having a strategy, for not planning well, for not strategizing well, what's the point in playing a strategy game? In fact, you're rewarded for failure. You're rewarded for not planning well by getting a leg up for your next run. It doesn't bode well for our X Factor, which is blending. And that is where we are now a 1 out of 10 for the X Factor blending. A 1 out of 10 means it's pretty much a complete and utter fail. The enjoyment relating to your squad in other great strategy games is to be found in really creating and attaching yourself to the soldiers. XCOM is a good example. You can customize everything usually, their origin, their story, every minute detail of their appearance and therefore, you form an interest and connection to how they progress both skill and story-wise through the game. You can make them an individual, and their success or failure in missions crafts each soldier their own personalized story. That is missing almost in totality on other side. One daughter feels much like the next, the customization is almost non-existent, and you never really get the opportunity or the want to get invested in them. You can't take this feature from games like XCOM out and still expect to be left with a good game. Alright, so what about the other side of the coin? The roguelite elements that the game boasts about, the developers and the publishers boast about. I've likened this other side to the successful XCOM for the strategy elements, and I'm going to hold other side to a high standard in the other genre also, something like Hades. Hades is a great example. And Roguelike elements are also where other, other side falls short. If I'm sitting down to play something like Hades or any other roguelike, I can get a few very different runs in. And then on top of that, I can also make progress towards my overall goal and progression as well. So we've got variance and overall progress. In other side, your campaigns aren't short runs, so you rarely feel like you're collecting the shards that move your next run up a notch. Nor do the abilities that you spend those shards on feel impactful enough for how much investment. So the roguelike elements suffer for having a strategy core, and the strategy game core suffers for trying to cram in roguelike elements. Look, I don't think those genres can be mixed, and if they can, I don't know how. But neither do the developers of Other Side. That's just going to about wrap it up for our coverage on Other Side thus far. Keep an eye on our website, keep an eye on the blog, keep an eye on the YouTube for more other side content, and thanks for listening.